All right, quick follow-up, <clears throat> part two. So, doing training fluid on this thing. So this does not have a dipstick. Um, do not use anything but factory CBT training fluid on this. It, <laughs> I've never bought such expensive training fluid. It was 25 bucks a quart. Um, usually when you get a um, unit from a junkyard, they drain it from the pan. I pulled my torque converter just to make sure they didn't pull that and drain it, which they did not, which I'm grateful for. But um, the way that you got to uh, make sure that you're up to level <clears throat> is uh, when you first get it up, before you start it, this is your fill plug, okay? Pull that out, fill it up. I grabbed this thing, cause that always sucks. So AutoZone or whatever has a decent plunger. It seals, it doesn't leak. I got, I've got, i gotten them at Harbor Freight before and they just, they, they just leak and they're just horrible. So I got that. It, you got to use three of them just to get one quart. This is what you use for this Subaru, but call it on your VIN number for the, um, and have them get the, whatever you need for the fluid. Make sure it's absolutely correct. So <clears throat> fill it up with it not starting before you started the vehicle. So it starts coming out, put that back on. And then you need to start the car and specs say they want the temperature, transmission temperature, not engine temperature, transmission temperature between 95 and 113. All right, so between 95 and 113 for transmission temperature. So the tough thing with that is you definitely need to have a scan tool that can read your training temp because even if you leave it running, right now I am up to 123 for trans temp. So if I was to try to check it now and make sure that it's up to par, it's gonna be, it's gonna be off. It might show that I have too much in there, but I actually wouldn't. Um, so you need to be through that between that window, 95 to 113 temp Fahrenheit. Um, and um, that is pretty much it. It was, it was pretty painless. Again, this mount on this driver's side, when I was putting this guy back together, that mount had shifted and that one bolt that I didn't, that you can't pull out because it hits a frame rail, had slid back between the bell housing and the training. And that was, I, I, I didn't see it, I was trying to, get them pull them back together until I was up top I was trying to figure out why they weren't pulling I thought it was just wasn't square to the engine the dowel pins were catching but then I looked down I saw that so I had to come back down and go backwards so keep an eye on that mount and that big bolt that goes all the way through because that will slide back in and get in your get in your way um, besides that pretty easy you can see the exhaust here I'm gonna put my bolt back in but see how that just grabs on there isn't that nice Use uh, put put some uh, ADCs back on your on your spots. It's just it's just a nice thing to do. Whether you're doing it next time or somebody else, just you can't <laughs> you can't put it on enough nuts and bolts. I'm up up here in Ohio, and you might as well. All right.